situation where it seems like there's been a you know a generalization is no problem and other situations in forms <coughs> where it seems like it's a big deal and that there's enormous variability you know some oh I've got no problem at all with that this is my, <laughs> this is my issue but you can see what we're trying to do oh, yeah. here is really get down to the to the basics of what's going on and that all ordering you know it's still maintaining that mm -hmm. split yeah. and why it's so important to give that up. But I, I do notice that over the years it's like that is the first time I've really noticed the smell of drink. Mm -hmm. it, and it just, it's like it puts a switch on. It was like when I tipped that lid back and that <laughs> thing came on. Yeah. Right. That's just what that smell does. Just click the thing and I'm back where I was. Trouble and I, and, all and the point is, it's not because of the smell. It's no. all put back. No. You know, smell is the cause of it. It's a decision. I put the smell there yeah. to, to do that to yeah. me, which and to me is very interesting. Yeah, and if there's that, that even that twinge of fear, it's obvious that the mind yeah. has has identified with the wrong mind again. Yeah, it's yeah. that level confusion that we were talking about yesterday. The yeah. mind has to be identified with. With the form and belief, with thoughts and form and belief that they're real before it, it can feel guilty. So it's that choice of the decision maker to choose to identify with the wrong mind. And then it gets played out in the scenario with the drink or this, that, but that's just symbolic. Yeah. Like we were talking with Sharon, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, the world is nothing but symbols. So the level confusion then is, is trying to bring wrong, you know, wrong minded things into the right mind or what? Well, still it's not saying where where they fall, is it? It's, it's thinking that, for me, I think of level confusion as, as always having the cause and effect thing opposite of how it truly is. You know, and so if yeah. I think something is causative in form, which is impossible, then that's level confusion. What I think of is that, that I'm feeling so comfortable that the ego thinks it'll creep up on me and just pass me the smell of drink and see what I do. <laughs> but we have to go deeper see, into this. We yeah. really, I mean, you can see if we can get really clear on this level confusion, mm -hmm. then it that's it. I mean, that's the thing. Down. It's not so much bringing, trying to bring the wrong mind into the right mind, <clears> because <throat> the right mind is the miracle. The right mind is the atonement, is the right, right mindedness, you know, is salvation and everything. Any kind of causality given to the world of form or any kind of ordering. I mean that's as long as there's ordering, as long as there's a hierarchy in any way, you know, a slight preference will throw off I mean you can't be in the right mind and have a, a slight preference for anything. So what's the relationship between having a preference and not being able to see that form is, is not cognitive? There must be some real close relationship there. Yeah. Well, having a preference you know, has to do with the hierarchy of illusions that we've talked about. I mean, it's impossible to think of a preference without that hierarchy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it means to have a preference, is to have some priorities and some right. lower priorities. Right. 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 And that hierarchy is, is impossible without the, the split, you know. Mm -hmm. So the split, the split mind is, the mind doesn't want to see that the split is in the mind, so it projects out the images and then is in chaos, in panic, you know, having projected out these images, and then it tries to order the images to try to bring some kind of security and some kind of control into a, a very wild, chaotic kind of a situation. And just in the split, I mean, within the, within the split is the whole idea that everything that's projected is positive. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then, then the, the ordering or preference thing is just trying to bring order to the chaos. Yeah, exactly. So, so the split in the mind is horrifying and it tries to project the split to, to, get, to give itself some relief, the illusion of relief. Yeah. And that's how sights and sounds are made. That, these yeah. sounds that seem to be, you mm -hmm. know, bothersome or these sites that are like, oh, that's too violent for me, I can't watch it, or this or that, you know, those are all, that's, that's an attempt to <coughs> deal with the <coughs> conflict and the, and the intolerable conflict in the mind by, by making up a screen to kind of like, 
to identify with a particular fragment as a whole human being, you know, that as opposed to a world that surrounds that human being, gives the mind a sense of integrity. I'm a David, I'm a Dorothy, I'm a Rhonda, I'm a Beverly. I'm a whole person in a in a world <laughs> that's, that's outside of me. See, that's how the mind tries to alleviate the split in the mind. Project the split outside and then identify with one particular fragment. And go, I've got a home now. <laughs> so why does the mind want all that stuff that's projected to be positive? Oh, so it can not look at that itself is tough. Yeah. And take that responsibility. It runs away from, from its I've just made this up and, and from looking at the ego, that's that's the best way to distract away from looking at the ego is get up, get caught up with all these oh, things. Oh, it's all this stuff. All it's all this stuff it's in probably the also the most convincing way for the mind to believe that that it made it up in a sense that it's so powerful that it's now the cause. Well, the deceived mind wants to forget that it made it up. I mean, that's what makes it seem helpless. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it wants to forget that it made it up. Sure. And so that's the, that's the that's whole the the dynamic that happens with sickness, too. It's a conscious decision, you know, to be sick or to project the sickness onto the body. And then the mind forgets. That's how it works. It does it, and then it forgets that it did it. It's just like with separation from God. It thinks it, it, it did it, it is horrified with that, so it wants to forget it that, it, that it did it. It wants to forget that it thinks it's in competition with God, yeah. which is, you know, insane. So it projects out a world that, and then it says God created the world, or this causes this, and there's no causation at all out there on the screen. But it needs to think that, because it's afraid of going back into the mind. So as we go on with this particular passage, you know, it'll 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 get clearer about this the way it has to, this ordering of thought that has to be ended, you know, for the for the split to get healed. Guilt is inescapable by those who believe they ordered their own thoughts and must therefore obey their dictates. This makes them feel responsible for their errors without recognizing that by accepting this responsibility they are reacting irresponsibly. If the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself, and I assure you that it is, then the responsibility for what is atoned for cannot be yours. This is a, this is a major area of level confusion that it's easy to get into where people will say, I invented the world I see. That means, you know, in everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. I'm responsible for my cancer. I'm responsible for the starving children. I'm responsible. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I mean, he's saying right here, you know, the responsibility for what is atoned for, the projection, you know, the self-concept itself is, is not, cannot be yours. The dilemma cannot be resolved except by accepting the solution of undoing. So all we are responsible for any time is always for accepting the atonement, for choosing the miracle. There's, there's not, uh, in the ultimate sense, you know, that has to be the way out of the escape because if I, if I stay in, I, I'm responsible for the starving children or for this or that, then the guilt has to remain. What if you don't feel responsible for the stopping children? I, you know, I, I don't feel responsible. I don't even, I don't even see Yeah, but maybe that's people. too far away. Maybe, but it's just saying you're not even responsible for any of your wrong thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I mean, I do feel responsible for my wrong thinking if I feel I've hurt somebody or attacked somebody oh, or... Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Or... The starving children is just one example. Since ideas leave not their source, <coughs> and the thoughts and the images are one and the same, that anytime, I mean, even like, a, we'll take a real subtle example, like when you were down, 
and you flipped the, the suitcase up and the thing oh, came yeah. on and you went, oh my, what have I done, or this or that. Yeah. That's coming, yeah. what have I done? You see, yeah. just the twinge, even the minor twinge of like, yeah. what have I done, that is still means that we must believe we're responsible for, for, our, doing, it. for doing it, for, yeah. for something in form. Mm -hmm. You know, or like, you know, a simple thing like, um, I was down in the woods this summer and I mean, out in the woods they have these big, big tanker insects <laughs> that look like they're from Africa or whatever, you know, they don't sometimes see in the city. And I remember I was down there getting ready to take a shower or something and this, I could hear it come, just rumbling <laughs> by coming right at my my eyes and my face. Like, I could see it coming in the distance. Oh, I, flying? Yeah, flying. And I remember I, put, like, I flinched and I remember the little thing inside was, Still afraid of something? Gotcha. Yeah, it's like, you know, this little thing just kind of remind me. Still, you know, just the flinch of this, the, the sight, the sound. There had to be an association, obviously, you know, with this thing. Little. You know, just, mm -hmm. and just being in touch with the feeling. Even something so simple as that, it's like, ah, oh, there has to still be yeah, some, some judgment, some, some ordering of thought. And, you know, you can see how subtle we're talking, but, and how important it is to be urgent yeah. and to be vigilant, to really... If we're to be healed and be used as channels for healing, we have to be healed and clear. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> how useful are we as channels, yeah. you know? Limited. Limited, yeah. It's like that smell of green. It's so subtle, it just threw it in. Mm -hmm. I just threw it in, just to see the reaction. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's very subtle. I mean, I've just kind of played around with it and just watched and experimented, like even with this, this body, you know, Preferences for clothing, mm -hmm. you know, preferences for food, preferences for the way I care for my body. I remember, I remember, you know, with like with my hair, there was lots of things exactly, you know, how I like it, how I want it to wear, how I want it to feel, how many, how do I wash it every day? You know, you can see that there's patterns and rituals that are really get tied it's in subtle realms, get tied into the hierarchies and preferences. When I'm on the road traveling or with this or that, you know, it's like trying to stay focused on my function, to really connect and be used and let go of all that. Not to get up and say, now, okay, I've got to do this, 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 and then, okay, then I've got the body taken care of. And then, I'm right. then, yeah, then, I'm right. then I've got to meditate for this amount of minutes or whatever, you know, if there's a ritual involved with that, to be still, to be ready for my function. No, somebody may be come knocking on the door when I'm there with my Matthew hair, you know, and it's like... You know, you got the whole thing is to stay in the moment and remember what my function is. But you can see how all these other preferences can really interfere mm -hmm. with that. Particularly when you do a lot, you know, when you're traveling, you get a, a good opportunity because there isn't that um, uh, it's not as convenient se seeming, always. yeah, and seeming stability of familiarity. Familiarity that yeah. that when you seem to live alone or you seem to yeah. live in a particular place, you have a shower available. Or, yeah, yeah, right. You, you start to, or, very, you know, the ego still gets into ordering, you know, this is, well, this is my place, a place of my own. You know, like, even the thought that I'm going back to Whitby Island or Cincinnati or the trailer or this and that, you know, it's still a future thought and it still has association of, you know, what I'm going to be doing or even Master Gardener or, you know, however you, you do that, those are all just concepts and constructs. And... And the thing about it is, is those are the very things and the very ordering that we have to let go to be totally present to that universal um, kind of spirit or, or forgiveness, to be totally on our function. You can see where to really stay with your function completely and never veer from it, you would have to give up all that ordering. Because otherwise that, that ordering is going to get in the way of the function. That's where the expectations arise, you know. Like, at least I would expect that they would do this, or do that, or, you know, with the green paper strips, you know, yeah. about, you know, well, I would hope that they could do this or that, or, you know, it just, you, there's just all these different realms that, that get in the way of one really holding on to one function. Well, and we bring function to happiness, too. If, if my function is my happiness, you can see how important it is, again, and if my function, I can't stick to my function with this ordering of thought, then my happiness is not, I'll never be happy or joyful until I let go of this relinquish of this ordering. So then when you make those connections, it's like, this is important. 
I'm ready. Yeah. I'm urgent. I'm willing. You know, I'm I'm ready to really watch my.